Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. We're going to talk about old age again today. First, we ask people a question about the future. How do you hope to spend your old age? We found that quite a lot of people want to go abroad when they're old. I hope to spend my old age in France, drinking good wine and eating good food in the sunshine. When I'm old, I hope to be living in the sun, enjoying a lot of free time and spending all the money I've earned. I would like to retire to a Caribbean country with a beach and sun. I think I'd like to spend my old age perhaps in the south of France or around the Mediterranean, relaxing and enjoying the countryside. I want to spend my old age in the Bahamas. Well, I think that sounds very nice too. For many people, the most important things are being fit and active. Mantenerse en forma y activos. Healthy, con buena salud. And having their family, their children and grandchildren, around them. I'd like to spend my old age in a big old house in Scotland with a few old friends, a couple of dogs and some chickens in the garden. Well, I want to be healthy and fit and looked after and um, go on doing everything I want. I have done all my life for as long as I can. I'd still like to be active in my old age, do things like walking in the countryside. Um, I want to spend my old age quietly at home, relaxing with my family. I hope to spend my old age with my family and hopefully my grandchildren. I don't want to spend my old age alone. I don't want to spend my old age alone. Yes, that's a real worry, isn't it? Now, what about people who are already retired? What do they think about being old? <laughs> We're very old, you know. <laughs> It's what my American brother-in-law calls his, his waning years. <laughs> um, <laughs> I quite enjoy it, actually. When we need to travel, we go when we like, where we like. Yes, I, uh, I find that I am far busier uh, in my... I suppose I'm old, I don't know, I'm 71. I find I'm far busier now than I've ever been before. And, uh, I thoroughly enjoy every minute of it. I'm doing the things that I want to do. Well, they're thoroughly enjoying their lives. Disfrutan muchísimo de la vida. But of course, everything isn't rosy and wonderful all the time for old people. No. We're going to show you a short extract from a television program that looks at the concerns of old people. Notice these expressions. Income support. Ayuda económica. The National Health Service. La Seguridad Social. And Social Services. Prestaciones Sociales. You'll also hear the expression fit the bill. It means ajustarse al modelo. The one thing all pensioners have in common is more leisure time than the rest of us. With the population getting older, experts say the political parties should be trying to make retirement more enjoyable. So apart from better pensions, what do old people want? Better transport, better adult education, better leisure centres which are less like palaces to the young and are more user-friendly for older people. That's just three things. The stereotype suggests if you're old, you're more likely to be poor and in ill health. While many don't fit the bill, Healthcare and pensions do worry the elderly. I'm on income support, and I think a little bit more extra money would help. 
taking care of the National Health Service, including hospitals, and also the elderly. That must be the first priority. And I think social services, because I had a husband for a long while that was ill, physically and mentally, and I had literally no help. All these services, the National Health Service, the social services, income support, pensions and so on, they're all part of the welfare state, el estado de bienestar. And that's the main topic in today's news programme. See if you can hear the answers to these questions. First, how does the reporter define the welfare state? And second, why should every working person in the country pay money to the government? Good evening. Here is the news from the BBC in London. The welfare state offers hope to old people. The great composer Sibelius dies at the age of 92. And what old people think about the beatniks. But tonight's main story is that the welfare state is offering hope to millions of old people. We are going over to our social affairs correspondent, Anna Pilkington. Anna, what exactly is the welfare state? Well, Trevor, it's basically a national insurance scheme. Every working person in the country pays money to the government so as to make sure that the less well-off are looked after. So what does this mean for old people? Well, Trevor, it means that everyone in the country gets free medical care and that all retired people will receive a state pension. How old do you have to be in order to receive this state pension? 60 for women and 65 for men. So you haven't got long to wait. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> and now for the rest of the news. The great composer Sibelius died today at the age of 92. He was still writing music in his old age. And finally, Old people are worried about a group of young people who call themselves beatniks. Apparently, the beatniks wear black clothes, drink lots of coffee, and listen to jazz music all day. People say that the beatniks should go and do a proper day's work. Quite right, too. That's all the news from the BBC in London. Good night. You don't hear much about the beatniks anymore, do you, Vanessa? No, they disappeared rather quickly. But the welfare state is still here. What exactly is the welfare state? Well, Trevor, it's basically a national insurance scheme. Un plan nacional de seguros. And why should people pay money to the government? Every working person in the country pays money to the government so as to make sure that the less well-off are looked after. So as to make sure that the less well-off are looked after. Para asegurar la atención a los más pobres. As you already know, there are two other expressions you can use that mean exactly the same. In order to. In order to make sure that the less well-off are looked after. Or simply, Two, to make sure that the less well-off are looked after. And now it's time for... Making yourself... <clears throat> understood. Today, Juan wants to visit someone in a rest home for the elderly. Una residencia de la tercera edad. But he doesn't know how to get there. Listen out for the expressions he uses when he asks for directions. And what exactly does Juan say when he doesn't understand what the other man says? Uh, excuse me, could you help me, please? I want to go to the Clarendon Rest Home. The Clarendon Rest Home? Is it near here? I hope so. It's a home for the elderly. It's in Exeter Road in Wimbledon. I have a friend whose mother is in there. I have to visit her to give her a present. 
Please, could you give me directions? It's very difficult. Why? In order to get to Wimbledon, you'll have to take an underground train. The station isn't far from here, though. I hope not. Could you tell me the way to the underground station, please? First left out of the building, second on the right, right of the roundabout, across two sets of traffic lights, is the um, third or fourth building on the left. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't quite catch all of that. Um, could you say it again, please? Hmm. First left out of the building, second on the right, right of the roundabout, across two uh, sets no, of traffic lights. No, I'm so awfully third... sorry. But could you say it a bit more slowly, please, so that I can write it down? I hope that this won't take too long. No, no. One more time. Slowly. Okay. First left out of the building, second on the right, right of the roundabout, across two sets of traffic lights, it's the third or fourth building on the left. <sighs> left. <laughs> Oh, dear. Juan isn't having any luck, is he? No, it's funny, isn't it? The other man was trying to be helpful, but didn't know how to be helpful. Anyway, how did Juan ask for directions? He actually asked three different questions. The key words in all of them are could and please. Uh, excuse me, could you help me, please? I want to go to the Clarendon Rest Home. Excuse me, could you help me, please? Please, could you give me directions? Please, could you give me directions? Could you tell me the way to the underground station, please? Could you tell me the way to the underground station, please? And what exactly did Juan say when he didn't understand the other man? I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't quite catch all of that. I'm sorry. I didn't quite catch all of that. Could you say it again, please? Could you say it again, please? Yes, could and please are the key words to make you sound more polite. So, what do you think is the polite way to say this? Say it more slowly. Listen to Juan. I'm so awfully better. sorry. But could you say it a bit more slowly, please? I am awfully sorry, but could you say it a bit more slowly, please? That really is very polite. First, apologise. I am awfully sorry. And then use could and please in the question. That's obviously a very important communication strategy. Be polite. Let's practice it. Make these words into polite questions using could and please. Say it a bit more slowly. Could you say it a bit more slowly, please? Repeat that. Could you repeat that, please? It's the end of the programme. Could you tell them it's the end of the programme, please? Certainly. It's the end of the programme. Goodbye. Bye.